It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> we are going to have a fun broadcast today. Well, I'm hoping it's going to be fun for some of you. We are doing um, a broadcast on how to clean those dirtiest places in your house. Now, when I say the dirtiest, I mean the germiest people in the house. Hi there, Linda, and hi, Kerry. And so the germiest places in your house, and I'm wondering if you know what the top 10 are. So hi, Jamie. I So what I've done is I've taken a list of a recent survey that was done on the top 10 germiest places in, in your household, and then um, thought we would do a little bit of work around <laughs> how we clean them and then maybe get some ideas from other people how they clean them. And I particularly asked Beth to come to the broadcast today because she's an OCD cleaner. And so if anybody knows how to do this quickly and the right way, it's probably Beth. But we've probably got a few ideas of our own. So I thought that would be a fun broadcast. So happy Father's Day for all those of you who um, hopefully all we're lucky enough to have fathers reminded that them and told them that you love them. <laughs> and so let us, before we start the main broadcast, as usual, we are going to do a, a few household items. But I just wanted to thank Kerry for helping me out on the last um, broadcast. You did a great job, Kerry. Thank you. And luckily, I remembered everything I needed to remember, so I didn't need your input. So <laughs> that was Really good stuff. Um, but Jody, she did a great job. <laughs> she she was there, and all I needed to know that there was somebody there to uh, assist me on those things. So it was awesome. Right. So first of all, Erin, uh, we're still keeping our fingers crossed that everything goes well, that she's heading in the right direction from what we hear. Lauren, uh, her sister is out of hospital, and Lauren... <laughs> is a little bit miffed because somebody took it upon themselves, and this happens all the time, right, to presume that because her mum was in hospital that she wasn't in a hurry to go home. Um, <laughs> and she is. <laughs> so I think she's sorted that one out for the person now. Uh, Jody, when's the MRI? Oh, did you? No, you haven't had the MRI yet, right? What is the new date for the MRI? But by the way, congratulations to Jody for being, I think it's three years clear of cancer. Um, but <laughs> Lionel, her husband, bought her a great congratulatory present. He bought her a milk foamer. And as you all know, I um, really like mine. <laughs> and I was saying to Jody, it probably is one of those you know, if I look at the kitchen gizmos I have, and I have a lot, which ones would I not part with in a hurry? My magic bullet would be one. I'd probably use it three to four times a day. And my FOMA on the 27th, okay? Let me get that in the list. And then the dentist Wednesday. Yeah, right. I've got to do that one as well. I know they've got to take me and put me under for a bad extraction. So, what day is Wednesday? 30th? Oh, 20th? Uh, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, 20th, I think, right? Yeah. Not counting well today. Right, and Kerry, uh, I think everything's back on track. I'm going to drop you off this uh, thoughts and prayers list. I mean, not, not that we don't always wish you well, Kerry, but I think you're over the panic that you had. <laughs> and you just actually what you probably don't know or may know is that you passed it on to somebody else <laughs> because you understand um when people can't get what they want from the person they want to then they'll start um on somebody else so well done Kerry you outweighed it hi Sharon welcome all right so this week birthdays we have got uh, let me think here. Do any of you remember Ryan? Any of you? <laughs> um, do you remember the 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 boundary you had to put down? Uh, 
Well, that that person has now moved on to another willing soul. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no further comment. And so, I'm just trying to remember. Just bear with me a second while I check, because I've got a feeling there's somebody else. But if, if any of you remember Ryan, any of you around long enough, I think Nana would if she was around. She were around rather. Um, Terry, do you remember? Were you around for the days of Ryan? He was very quiet and he rarely spoke, but every now and then, I think he was autistic or, or something like that. And then every now and then he would come in and say something. Okay, just bear with me a second. I just want to get this birthday thing correct because for some reason. Just bear with me, people. Sorry to do this while you're waiting. But if I don't, I will forget it. Okay, here we go. I will sort that out after the broadcast. Thank you guys for your patience. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, vaguely. That's right, Kerry. Um, it would have been in the days of blog TV originally, I think. So it would take people who were, you know, viewers uh, from way back then. All right, so I'm glad, glad that you will see your teddy bear tomorrow. Yeah, that's so cute. We are very happy. All right, so congrats to both uh, still for Beth and for Kerry for getting there. Oh, Jamie remembers. Yes, I, you know, I had a feeling that those of you who were around in those early days would remember. Um, very quiet guy, but but you know when he did speak, it was always a delight. Uh, I wonder how he's doing. <laughs> you know, that sort of touched my soul now to try and remember how he's doing. I haven't heard from him in the longest time. Never mind. Uh, good. So, Kerry, have you started your job already? I know Beth has. Start on Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is an auspicious auspicious day. Boy, that's difficult to say. <laughs> Lots of things happening on Wednesday. All right, so let's move on. I'm just getting these screens right, ready for the main event coming up any minute now. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, both Debbie and Chip, who are helping me with my new mission. I, I have a mission to clear an area of shredding. And so for those of you who understand how difficult that can be, because it's not my idea of fun, uh, both Chip and Debbie have shredding to do, and they offered to do theirs this week with me. So that is awesome. For some reason, that makes it better. Hmm. And while I think about it before anybody asks me for dinner tonight, because <laughs> I know you always want to know, uh, we'll be doing steak and halved russet potatoes grilled on the barbecue, um, you know, rolled in oil and salt and pepper. And then the, the um, cut half is down on the barbecue so that it gets nice and crispy. <laughs> and they're half cooked already. Uh, and they're just staying warm while I do the broadcast. And 
I've already done uh, a mixture of different root vegetables, funny enough, uh, you, for those of you who like carrots and um, sort of it's carrots and and other root vegetables. I'm thinking parsnip and some others. I can't remember which ones. And then also I've got yams and stuff like that. And I put it all together and I roll that in um, a mixture of olive oil and rosemary. Um, and then grill it. And I must tell you that it's very, very tasty. Uh, I really recommend that, that for some reason, uh, I, I have to thank Jody for this because she was talking to me about grilling vegetables one day and I was going, you know, I really should do that on my barbecue. So what I did is I, I took all my leftover root vegetables and things and onions and stuff like that. And I put them all on the barbecue after I finished cooking last week. And then I froze it. Yeah, I cooked them, poire cooked them, half cooked them, and then put them into plastic bags and froze it. And so today I just have to warm them up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but wait, but wait. For dessert, we're having pavlova, which is a meringue smothered with, you know, whipped topping and then a, uh, a strawberry on top. So everybody's getting a couple of those. And by the way, so simple to do and <laughs> so decadent. It's wonderful. I, I bought one box of, box of meringues for, for them and then I'll be having my own box during the week. <laughs> or tomorrow, as the case may be. <laughs> Yeah, Jody, and again, I have to thank you because you mentioned it in a in a in a message sometime in the last couple of weeks, and I thought, oh, I love pavlova. Okay, so if you're all, hopefully, that'll give some of you some ideas. For those people who might be watching and ghosting, in other words, we can't see you, but you're listening to us anyway. Welcome. We always appreciate having you on board, and we've met some great people who started that way. So feel free to join in if you'd like to, but if you're happier not doing so, that's fine with us. Hi, Savannah. And so here is the thing. Uh, if you'd like, if, even though you're a ghoster, if you'd, there's a subject you'd like me to talk about, uh, please write to me at dearmamasal at gmail.com. I won't mention your name unless you tell me it's okay to. So the same thing is feel free to come in knowing that when I finish the broadcast, I will disconnect the chat uh, probably within five minutes. Sometimes it gets a bit delayed. Uh, within five minutes, the, the actual written chat will disappear. And therefore, you know, it's a, it's, I think it's a lot more um, pleasant for people that way. However, for those of you who do come in and talk, uh, if there's anything I think might be sensitive area for you, I will actually... Uh, ask you first before I actually talk about it, as the regulars will tell you. Yes, lighting a candle would be very cozy. However, I have to tell you something, Kerry, <laughs> that it's over 80 degrees in my house at the moment, so I won't be lighting anything that is hot. That's why I'm glad I'm doing barbecue today. So before we get on to this cleaning those germy areas, which is our topic. I just want you to make sure you all understand I am not a professional cleaner, nor do I pretend to be, but I am hoping that we get a couple of people who actually are really good at this stuff to, to participate and let us know how they do these things, because really what we find is it's your information that really makes this fun and it makes it interesting. <laughs> you, you obviously have air conditioning, Kerry, which I don't. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. So some of you are, yeah, it's a, oh, that's very low. Only 78 in Southern California. Wow. By the way, if you are not a regular uh, to the broadcast, but would like to be advised when they're on, please make sure you subscribe to Dear Mama Sal on Facebook or Dear Mama Sal on Twitter, preferably both. Uh, and make sure you click on the bell that's somewhere on your screen, normally up in the right-hand corner next to my beautiful face, <laughs> because that's how you get told how thing, when things are happening. All right, so let us talk about those germy areas. What is your guess 
Yeah, let, let's see how good we are on these. Uh, what is your guess on which areas are the top ones? Anybody? All right, so Kiri says bathroom. Okay, any others? Uh, kitchen from Linda. Bedroom, Savannah, that's interesting. And we'll talk about that. Jamie also says kitchen. All right, so you're doing rooms. How about any specifics? What do you think specifically in a kitchen is the germiest area? Hi, Lord. Kitchen shopping block, absolutely, Maggie, welcome. And that is definitely one of them. You know, that, that comes in, I think, uh, as the first one we discussed, but means it's probably number 10. So yes, uh, what do you think they find on shopping blocks? Cutting boards. Hi, Chip, welcome. What 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 do you think they found when they when they tested people's cutting boards? What do you think they found? Yes, some people say it's dirtier than your toilet seat, which is good to hear. They actually found yes, they found uh, coliform bacteria, and fourteen percent of them contained mold and yeasts. So how many of how how often do you guys clean your chopping block or? And how, hi Beth, glad you're here. So, and how do you clean them? Let's get some good ideas on how you clean your chopping block and how often. Okay, Maggie, you say you clean yours several times a day. How do you clean them several times a day? Literally, what do you do to clean it? That's what I'm trying to get at. Vinegar, salt, and lemon. Yes, two, you know, three very important things. Um, even if you take uh, salt um, and you know a lemon, half cut a lemon in half and then rub it. That's a really good way to do it. Call salt and lemon. Yes. So, so obviously everybody's got this one, but quite honestly. The professionals say, and listen to this, I was quite surprised. If every time you use it, you actually wash it down thoroughly with hot soapy water, uh, it actually does most of the job. You know, I would say once a week, really scrub it down or, you know, after you've put um, fresh meat on it, you know, scrub it down with salt and uh, lemon. But other than that, I say, Lord says she's absolutely paranoid about her chopping block. She cleans it immediately using hot water, soap, and chlorine. I, hmm, I personally have a thing about chlorine, so I do mine with vinegar. By the way, how many of you hate the smell of vinegar? Any of you? Do any of you not use vinegar because you don't like the smell? I'm so glad that you're all here. <laughs> it makes it great. Great information for people. Yes, not chlorine if it's wood, and mine is definitely wood, so that's why I don't use chlorine on mine. Thanks, Beth. Do you want to tell them why, Beth? Yes, uh, we're getting to that one, Maggie, so just hold on a second. I actually don't do that. I do something else with mine. That's what I wanted to share with you. Yes, um, chlorine will get absorbed by the wood, and how many of you want to be putting chlorine into your food. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's why I don't use chlorine on mine, but that's just, uh, but I, I must admit that maybe once a month, I scrub mine down with uh, with uh, soft scrub with some chlorine on it. 
but I really wash it down very, very well afterwards. You can't stand the smell of the vinegar, Lord. Here's what I found out. I, I love this trick from my realtor. Um, nobody likes the smell of vinegar in a house. However, <laughs> use orange peel in vinegar. It smells wonderful. Yes, I use... I use uh, vanilla essence in mine, a couple of drops of that, or even a squidge of, you know, what a squidge is, a squidge of lemon is good. But I actually have started keeping on a mug warmer in my kitchen a mixture of cinnamon sticks, vanilla, and allspice. And I just put a couple of drops of that into the vinegar water mix that I have. Works. And it's, I want to tell you the smell of that. Yes, put a vanilla bean in. Exactly. So I just, you, if you haven't got the bean, use vanilla essence. Just a drop of it will make all the difference. You'll be so glad you did. <laughs> all right. So obviously you're all experts at this game. Now the next one, you put straight up lemon juice. Yes. You see, or tea tree oil. All right. There are all sorts of things that will take smell away. But what I was saying was that a realtor told me the best smell you can have in a house for um, showing it or whatever is vanilla with cinnamon. So I thought you might like want to know that. And presumably they know what they're doing. I thought it was fresh baked bread, but apparently not. It's vanilla and cinnamon. Right. The second number nine on this list um, again in the kitchen, was the knobs on your stove top. How many of you still got knobs on your stove? Yes, and I've often wondered, will it, in, will, Maggie's saying that tea tree oil is the best for antibacterial purposes. Huh. I, I would be worried about mixing tea tree oil and vinegar, but I don't know enough chemistry to know whether that's an issue. All right, so if you've still got stovetop knobs, they are rated very high for germs. So let's hear it. How do you clean? By the way, 14% of the knobs had chloroform bacteria, while 27% harbored molds and yeast. How often do you clean them and how? Let's hear it from my wonderfully talented talented group of people who know these things. I wouldn't mix them together either. This is the tea tree oil and vinegar. Yeah, I don't know why. Something tells me those are two acids in, in you know, so they might not work. Oh, Jodie takes a Q-tip with Clorox on it, right, to clean her knobs. Now, obviously, they do say if you've got knobs, if you've got knobs, <laughs> If you've got nubs on your uh, stove, um, how many of you <laughs> just squidge it with, um, spritz it with one of these things, you know, uh, without turning it off or anything? Yeah, if you do, join a lot of us. Um, but we do know that's not really the right way to do it. Take the knobs off. And they actually say, just drop them. <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Just drop them in hot, hot soapy water. How will you know if they're clean? Yeah, it's funny, Lourdes, because I, I literally spritz mine down. Um, the ideal thing is to spritz the cloth, not the knobs, is what they're saying, unless you want to electrocute yourself, in which case, you know, go right ahead. All right, so if you've got really bad ones, Beth, right, you use baking soda and vinegar on the knobs. But the, the main thing is take them off, soak them in hot soapy water. Most of it will just wipe off anyway. And, you know, you'll be able to tell if they're plastic, which most of them are. You'll be able to tell if they're clean because they squeak, right? <laughs> if they're squeaky, it's clean. So, but so if you have difficulty getting them off, what they say is, you know, spritz the cloth, not the, <laughs> not, not the knobs, guys, because we'd like to have you around for more broadcasts. And here's what, I've, on one place I found a recommendation, first pull the knobs off and allow them to soak in a bowl of white vinegar. 
let's see just what Beth's saying as well. If you can't remove the knobs, spray them thoroughly with the solution, then spray the oven with vinegar and leave it for 30 seconds. Wipe down the entire surface. Don't spritz your knobs. Yeah, well, this is interesting because they're saying, if necessary, do it. But All right, and so number seven on the list, counting backwards, the one nobody's mentioned in the kitchen, which is the countertops. How many of you know infestation of germs? Worse than the, than the knobs, worse than the cutting board. 32%. Has have um, chloroform bacteria and coli well coliform actually, while eighteen percent were found to have molds. So let's hear it. How do you clean your countertops? And Now, I've got to admit that I do mine in two different ways, and I'll hear how everybody does theirs, and then I will add the way that I do it. Yes, Kerry, hot soapy water actually is the answer for a lot of things. And antibacterial method spray, non-toxic, right? Let it sit for two minutes and wipe it off. So for those of you who use that brand called Method, that the antibacterial apparently is good for that. Use spritz with chlorine bleach cleaner on the countertop. You're a bleach freak. Yes, Lord. We can imagine what your house smells like. Yeah, Kerry's throwing in uh, Clorex wipes. How many of you use antibacterial wipes? Now, a lot of you don't want to use them because of the landfill. But... I'd like to tell you they're reusable if you want to. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> you know, stick them in an empty one of those containers, you know, with a little bit of bleach and water, and you've got new ones. You have to be careful if you have granite, as Beth. You see, Beth, that's why I wanted to make sure you were here, because I know you've got lots of professional experience of this. All right, so now Maggie's saying don't use antibacterial wipes because they build resistant bacteria. See? <laughs> Let me tell you what the expert said. The expert said rinse the countertops with a diluted bleach water solution after preparing food, unless your countertop requires special care. So I prefer vinegar and water because I still think that's antibacterial. Vinegar is a, you know, has that, but it's not chlorine. So tea tree oil would be the same, but it would make your food smell funny. So um, I, I, I think again, you know, you can't use vinegar too much in a lot of things. Yeah, I do too. Now, then how many of you got pets? Pets come in the next one. We're working up to the highest problem. What areas around pets do you think carry the most germs? <laughs> Just so we're clear. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah, I know you, ha you have pets too. That's right. So that's why I thought you'd be interested in this, that it actually, two of the top 10 have to do with pets. They're saying 23% of pet toys were found to harbor potentially dangerous staph bacteria. In fact, the highest percentage of any household item studied. Yeast and mold on 55% of pet toys and 14% harbored coliform bacteria. Now, that's pretty bad. And I know we love our pets. So the question is, how often do you clean your pet toys and how do you do it? I'm talking about, let's talk about the plastic ones first, the squeaky toys, for example. How do you clean them?
Right, Kerry's saying that she washes Dora's toys once a week. Beth's saying, did you also know that a human mouth is more dirty than an animal's? Yes, I believe so. All right, shove them in the washer. Yes, Linda, put them in the dishwasher or put them in the washing machine. One or the other, you know, throw them all into, um, what do you call it, a pillowcase. Uh, if you know, put elastic band around it and throw it in the uh, washing machine, you'll be amazed how clean they become. Or put them in your dishwasher on the highest cycle that you can. I, I would also, after I put them in either of those two, I would make sure that I gave them an extra rinse before I handed them back to the dogs. Just a thought. Do any of you have steamers? Yeah, but, but interesting though, do you do it once a week? So just get into the habit when you finish doing your wash of your clothes, throw in, um, yeah, I, I would sort of give your dog two lots of toys, this week's toys, and then then put, um, you know, out last week's toys, put them out to play with, and then put this week's toys in and give them a clean. Yes, I want to tell you, I've got a handheld steamer. And if ever you want to have an absolute really tight moment, um, clean a countertop the best you can with um, whatever you care to use. And then take a handheld steamer and at an angle, you know, sort of like this, then steam your countertop into a white cloth. Um, I, I, my, my, I use face cloths in my kitchen rather than paper towels a lot of the time. And I want to tell you, you will be horrified. If you like, I will do an experiment with it for you, but I've done it before and I have just been absolutely horrified what still comes out with a steamer. So in a lot of these things, I'd like to suggest there's nothing like steam. Um, to clean things. Yes, Beth's saying her do dog forgets about the ones I've washed. And I surprise him in a couple of weeks and then go, yeah, new toys, you know. <laughs> and that's what they think, that they're new toys. I, I want to tell you something, Lord. I, yes, I steam around cooker knobs as well, but I'm not going to say that on public television, if you like, because um, that would not be a good thing for me to recommend. Yes, another place you want to have a nightmare is steam. Steam your toilet seat and where you sit uh, or the bottom of it, you know, and, you know, just put towels at the bottom and steam. How many of you use your steamer for your blinds? I, I, I literally just steam my way down my blinds. And it's, I, I just put a big bath towel at the bottom. And then, mind you, I do have to say now that I've given up, now that I've given up smoking, it's not nearly as bad as it used to be, but it's still pretty horrific. And literally, it's the easiest thing because you just put a big bath towel at the bottom to catch all the water and then start steaming from the top and work your way down. And it just, it is, a, to me, it's amazing anyway, how that works. All right, so for those of you who mentioned, <laughs> yeah, Lord, <laughs> I'm full of useless information. <laughs> uh, by the way, are any of you enjoying this? Is this the sort of thing you'd like more of? So next one, as some of you mentioned, faucet handles. I would say anywhere in your house. Good, Kerry, I'm pleased. And thanks, Jody, I'm glad you find the information useful. Faucet handles, I don't care where they are, steam them. I, I would really recommend steaming them. Um, and how many of you notice, it's absolutely insane. You, you know, you go, for, for example, if you're in a public place, you, you, <laughs> you go through all that business of washing your hands and then you touch the door handle. You know, it's like, really? I don't think so. Yeah, so 
I would really recommend um, obviously steaming them, but they found uh, coliform bacteria on 9% of the bathroom faucets and 27% had molds and 5% carried staph infection. And it says, now this is interesting, this is the first time the official thing have said this, clean your faucet handles daily with disinfectant wipes or spray. Yeah, now that's pretty hard, right? Light switches are bad. Yes, how often do you clean your light switches? It's actually not on the top 10 list, but I am amazed. I find the easiest way just you know, because I'm pretty lazy about that. About every six months, I'll take a whole set of them off and put them in the dishwasher, run the dishwasher, and then, you know, and, and then dry them and put them back on. And, you know, all the gunge and grease is gone and you can start again. But, you know, I, I understand that the bit that you actually touch, the up and down bit, um, is the one that gets really... Yeah, it's interesting. Lots of say she never touches a public door handle. I I actually carry. Hang on a second. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you can all just see this. I carry one of these small Purex things uh, on my keychain. And so uh, when I go shopping, if I take a shopping cart, I will, you know, literally take some Purex and put it on the shopping cart handle before I use it. Yeah, so that's the only time I really use, I must admit, uh, that and obviously in a washroom. And this has probably lasted me nearly a year, and it's half full. So um, you get this in the travel section, you know, where they have the travel size shampoo and stuff. Yeah. By the way, try not to use it more than you really have to, because again, um, you're actually minimizing your ability to handle infection if you use it too much. So I use mine obviously in a public washroom area or uh, on the handles of shopping carts, which is not on our list. Hmm. I'm, th I'm thinking about, mm, never mind. <laughs> We'll do that on a we'll do that on another broadcast. Okay. Interesting. Yes, um, I'm not sure. I don't think I've got it on this one, Beth, but it definitely is one I was going to add, but let's add it today anyway. Beth is saying her husband, whose name I've forgotten, but thank you, husband, said to mention keyboards. They are the worst, and they are. He's a tech guy at college, and he uses sanitizer all day. Uh, I must admit that I have um, about once a week, I, I go down my keyboards with um, a wet wipe uh, to make sure um, that it's you know pretty clean. Um, and if anybody else uses my computer, you know, I, I know that the germs that are on my computer are mine because nobody else uses it. But I know, for example, when I was in an office situation, a lot of people wouldn't touch their mouse or their keyboard if somebody else had used their, their uh, stuff without sanitizing it first. So it's interesting. But they do, I agree. Keyboards are known. Not only that, inside the computer, <laughs> you'll be amazed what's in there. Mostly eyelashes and bits of skin. Phones are filthy as well. Okay, we'll get to those on another broadcast, but we're doing the top 10 today. 
and we'll move down to some of those other ones and feel free to add to the list and we'll find out the official way to clean them. Now, this one, you probably know, but I wonder how often you clean yours. The next one up the list, and it's above kitchen counters, it's above chopping boards, it's above all sorts of other things, is a coffee maker. The dark, damp reservoir of your coffee maker. 50% of the reservoirs swabbed during the study had mold and yeast. And 9% had that coliform bacteria. When did you last clean your coffee machine? I feel very good because I actually did mine in the last month. <laughs> and do you know how to do it? And if you don't, tell me and I will let you know. The other thing is it keeps it running properly because it dissolves the calcium that might be there as well. Yes, that's good. Jody says she does a vinegar rinse once a month. So for those of you who may have a coffee maker, this is how you do it. Um, just put four cups, they say about four cups of vinegar into a full reservoir if you've got a Keurig. Um, one of those big ones, and let it sit for about 30 minutes. Then start running through the coffee, the hot water or the coffee making system. In other words, first let the actual container have a half an hour of vinegar. And then start using that vinegar to go through the system. Once you've gone through the system with what's left in the reservoir, I actually empty my reservoir out, then I clean it with soap and water, and then I thoroughly rinse it, and then I start another full thing, and I use that all the way through, and by then the smell of vinegar is gone. Yes, um, Beth is saying she's got hard water, so that's why she does it once a week. I don't. I do mine probably every couple of months. Actually, to be honest, I think I do mine every season. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to be honest here. I think, yeah, it does descale as well. That's why it's a really good thing to do. And that's why I do mine every season. You know, if it's spring, okay, I did it. If it's summer, we haven't got to summer yet, right? It's coming up, so I will need to do it again. That's how I do certain things. You know, did I do it this season? So, Maggie is reminding us that hand sanitizers are not supposed to be good for you. We're building up superbugs by overusing antibacterial products. Yeah, that's what I tried to say. The bugs have to mutate to survive the antibacterial things we use. You know, I personally, that's the same thing. Is I think we need to go back to letting kids play in mud, you know, and eat all the wrong things because they built up an immune system that, that we're stopping. I am amazed. I've watched some mothers who are so incredibly sensitive to their children not picking up any bugs, and I'm going, wow, how are they going to stay healthy if you do that? Just a thought. Oh, Beth says, don't ever drink coffee from a doctor's office or any waiting, a public waiting area. They never clean them. Or maybe, Beth, you could do a sal. And that's, you know, now that I've thought about that, every time I see one of those, I will say to the receptionist, as a matter of interest, when did you last clean it? I just want to know, so I've got an idea of how, many, how, how germified this would be. Yeah, it's a very good point. And if we all keep asking them that, it'll give them the reminder that it needs to be cleaned. Yes, you see, Maggie, and I agree with you, and Kerry, you know, that we, we need to play in the dirt a bit more, you know, and, and get some of those bugs and build up a natural immunity rather than have to take, you know, antibiotics. That's just, I've got quite a thing about it. All right, here's the second pet one for those of you who've got pets. Listen to how far we are up the list. It's number four on the list is the pet bowl. How many of you 
sanitize your pet bowls? And if so, how often? Because 45% of the bowls in the study were harboring mold and yeast and 18% contained chloroform bacteria. How do you do it every day, Beth? And Kerry said she always cleans it. Right, what I want to know is how, because there are people there who want to check if they're doing it the right way. All right, so Jody says it's a pet peeve of hers. A pet peeve, very funny, Jody. <laughs> a pet peeve, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a pet peeve of hers. She does it uh, twice a week. I used to put bins in the dishwasher as well. I had two different bowls. One went into the dishwasher, the other went on the floor. Uh, Linda says she feeds the dog twice a day and washes it twice a day. All right, a pet peeve. I ain't going to remember that for a long time. So Beth says her dog has gum disease, so she has to. She does it with vinegar and hot soapy water. So, you know, the use of vinegar is a big thing, everybody. If you haven't got a spritzer thing with vinegar and water in it, then, you know, you definitely haven't lived, apparently. <laughs> and a little bit of vanilla or cinnamon. And coming in higher than a pet bowl is... Now, this one probably is a no-brainer for you guys, but I want to tell you it's high up the list. It's toothbrush holders. And I would think toothbrushes as well, right? The high bacteria levels on a toothbrush holders, 27% had coliform and 14% had staph. And they think it's because toothbrushes and toothbrush holders are normally fairly close to the toilet. One flush can unleash a fecal containing, you know, aerosol. It's like a fecal containing aerosol. 64% harbored mold and yeast. Yes, absolutely. Put the container and the toothbrush, I would, into the dishwasher a couple of times a week if you can. Yes, but even so, if you think about it, Linda's saying she's got one of those clip things that goes over the head of the brush, but, you know, then you have got mold because you've got, uh, you've got, um, you know, water being trapped. So I think it's better to let them dry out myself, but hear the point, keep them as far away from the toilet as you can. You know, don't have them out in the open is, is what we're saying. Use them and put them away somewhere, in a drawer, in a cupboard, somewhere. But, you know, remember to throw them in the dishwasher. How many of you throw your hairbrush in the dishwasher every now and then? I do. I sort of have what I call a general cleaning thing, and I put... <laughs> yeah, close the lid when you flush. I'm very bad about that. Yes, I keep mine uh, under the kitchen, uh, under the bathroom sink. Yeah, I do as well. So that's good. Anyway, I thought you'd, I mean, it's not a pretty thing to remember just when I'm about to go and eat, but I, I did think that maybe some of you would like to hear that news. So cover them up, people. Retrain your children if you've got them at home and do it in a hurry. And yes, even, even if you close the lid of the toilet when you flush it. Um, oh, yes, how often do you, good point, Kerry, how often do you change your toothbrush? I don't know what a steripod is. Wow, this is amazing. People saying, Maggie says she ch changes her toothbrush every month. Jody says every three months. Linda says every six weeks. Really? <laughs> Mine? <laughs> Yikes. Well, apparently, I'm not such a good person. <laughs> Okay. 
I don't think I'm going to go there. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get a new one this week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, Kerry says she changes hers about once a month unless she's sick. And then I change it after I get better. It's called a Sani pod. Send me a link for that and I will... Um, uh, add the link uh, into the notes on this one because that's a good thing for people to know. Yeah, good one. Very interesting. All right, so here's the next one. And none of you will be surprised that kitchen sinks rate very highly. It comes in at the second most infected area. 45% of sinks tested positive for coliform bacteria, while 27% contain molds. And they are saying, please, 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 when you clean the sink, please remember to clean the sink strainer. And if you've got a, a garbage disposal, a garburator as I call it. If you've got a dark garbage disposal, you know that rubber bit that, that fits into your sink, take that out and clean that well um, and the area around it because that's where, you know, it really is amazing how much stuff congregates in that area. So, yeah, I must admit that I'm pretty good. I, I felt quite confident about this. I'm pretty good about this. I clean my kitchen sink probably every night, um, at most every other night. And I scrub it down with uh, Clorox bleach, the soft scrub stuff, and let it and leave it on there to harden. Do you know what I mean? Because it's a liquid. I, I will smear it all in there and let it harden. And then I, I rub it off and it actually makes her a really shiny sink. You've never understood the need for an in-sink garbage disposal you, because you've never had one? <laughs> a bit like a dishwasher. <laughs> Can't really realize why I needed a dishwasher until I had one. Then I knew why I needed one. Um, So, yeah, I guess it's not an essential, but it certainly saves on a lot of um, garbage, I guess. Now, for anybody who doesn't have a, a garbage disposal but would like one, do you know what I found in when I go camping? <laughs> um, sometimes, or, or if I'm... You know, if I'm ever in somewhere where there isn't a garbage disposal, I just, <laughs> I've been known to throw it all in the blender and set the blender going and then pour it down. Actually, Beth, I, I find that interesting. Beth's saying she doesn't use her dishwasher because it uses so much water. I have a, a Connor cycle in mine. Um, and I find, I personally think it uses less water than when I do it by hand. That's just my feeling. And I think if you talk to the Home Depot people, they will tell you just how many gallons it uses. And you've probably done the research already, but it's actually surprising. How many of you, I find when I wash by hand, I use more water. That's what I heard, Maggie. I heard that a dishwasher uses less water than hand washing. Yeah. Even if it's old, uh, even if it's old, it's, uh, you know, it's surprising. Um, I, I've noticed it because when I wash by hand, you know, you, you rinse everything, that's water, you rinse everything, then you put it in and wash everything and then you rinse everything. So that's like, um, you know, a lot of water. 
So, and the, that water works. I, I guess you get more work for your water when, when it's in a dishwashing machine. That's my sense anyway. I'm not saying you're not right. So the official way that you should clean your sink, what they're saying is to clean the sides and bottom of the sink twice a week. Well, we, I think we all do that. Um, once a month, pour a solution of one teaspoon of bleach per quart of water down the drain. And, and as I said, don't forget to wash that sink strain. Right, Beth saying, even with using the electricity to heat and dry, I just thought it would be more expensive. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I'd research it, Beth. Don't take my word for it, right? You're a smart cookie. We found that out about you. Do your research on Google. And, you know, I'm certain you won't be the first person to ask that question. You know, even put in the make of your dishwasher, if you like. Maybe it will tell you how many gallons of water does it use for a full cycle. I found, for example, in my washing machine, I don't know how many of you understand what I'm about to say. For my dark wash in the washing machine, I only use a quick cycle. I don't use a full cycle. The other thing is, most of the time, you could get away with only putting soap in your wash every other wash. Do you know that? And if you don't believe me, if any of you have got a, a washing machine, a front load washing machine where you can see the soap bubbles, try washing your clothes without any soap in them and see how much soap there is. Yeah, I, I use the full cycle once a week for my really my really dirty, you know, because I'm downsizing and finding a lot of stuff. But I for my dirty hi Angeline, welcome. I, I do I do do that once a week. Um or once every other week sometimes I do what I call a bleach load, where I'm literally bleaching stuff, and that is the only full load I do. But you will be quite surprised. Um if you just just do one load one day just for the experiment, you can always add a bit more powder if you want to, but you will be surprised how much soap is residue in your clothes. And it's actually better for your clothes not to put soap in them every time. All right, so now then, the top germ area, nobody even mentioned. Or if you did, I didn't see it your sponges in your kitchen or your dish rags are inclined to be the germiest. And I know some of you are saying not mine, which is awesome. However, for those of you who don't know about this, the germiest item in your household is the item you use to keep things clean. 77% <laughs> Harvard coliform bacteria, and 86% contained yeast and mold. Even scarier, 18% contained staph bacteria. I have learned a trick, which I will say at the end of this. They're suggesting microwave your sponges once a day for two minutes and replace every two weeks. If you use a rag, toss it in the hot water cycle every day or two. Now, I want to tell you what I've learned to do. And I do it with my brushes and my sponges. My brushes and sponges no longer live under my sink. They live in my dishwasher. That's their official place. And I want to tell you, by having them in the dishwasher, my sponges are sterilized every day. But I'm amazed how long they last. They last a lot longer. Uh, wait a second. Okay, so here we go. Here's one of my sponges. Now, when you look at it, pretty darn new, right? It's in good condition, but when you see the back of it, you know it's not that new. But look how clean it is. And by the way, when you touch it, there is no, you can't feel that soap residue in there. 
why it lives in my dishwasher. I have three sponges in my dishwasher and my dish brushes. Just my, my tip. Let's see what the professionals say. Yeah, microwave the wet sponges once a day for two minutes. Uh, welcome back, Jamie. You missed quite a bit here, Jamie. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is if I'm sterilizing them every night, I don't see why I have to keep replacing them, and I don't. I replace them, you know, about once a year. I, I, put a new, I put in a new set of sponges. It's a great way to clean them. I, I think dishwashers are way more useful than most people give them credit for. Um, you know, I, I, I use mine to clean ornaments, for example. You know, I'll, one, once or twice a year, I will take my ornaments put them in my dishwasher and then clean them with just dish soap, just a teaspoon of dish soap um, and run through a gentle cycle. And they're all, all the, you know, that greasy residue comes off them and they're squeaky clean, as they say. Right, so I hope that was helpful. And this is the dirtiest, most germ-infected part of your house. How about that? How many would have thought that? Worse than your toilet? <laughs> so, pretty interesting stuff. So, for each of you, did you, did any of you learn something new today? Because if you did, it was worth the research that I did. <laughs> Yeah, Maggie says she finds that the scratchy size wires down quickly. Yeah, I, I do too. And so what I do is I have one of those thin ones, you know, just that where it's just that. Um, I, I keep that. By the way, <laughs> by the way, you know these, they're normally green or blue where it's just this bit. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know what the right name for it is. <laughs> They are great for exfoliating your legs. You know, to get the loose skin off your legs. About once a month, I will take one of those and I'll go over my legs and sometimes even my arms and just take the dead skin off. And it's amazing how much comes off using one of these, you know, the, the, where it's just this stuff. Um, and then I moisturize and I go, well, that stuff, of course. I have been amazed. I, how many of you have air cleaners in your bedrooms? Um, HEPA filters or you know, some sort of filter in your bedroom that filters the air. It's a pleasure, Linda. Maggie, no, honey, you're not the only one who thinks of smart things like that. But it works, doesn't it? I'm quite surprised. Yes. You see, once you exfoliate your skin, um, I haven't actually used it on my face, to be honest, but I have used it on my arms and I definitely use it on my lower, you know, between my knee and my ankles. I do that quite regularly. Yeah. Anyway, so I've got two, two air filters in my bedroom. I am horrified horrified at how much dust gets collected on them. And for, you know, and that is not, you know, that's dry skin cells, apparently, dust uh, in your bedding, whatever. I dust, I dust my bedroom, you know, a couple of times a week. Plus, I have two dust filters going. And I just am horrified at how much they collect. I mean, you can say it's a bit like for those of you who used to have car. How many of you had carpets but now have um, flooring of some sort, laminate or imitation laminate or whatever? By the way, they're making some great lino that looks like laminate now. <laughs> you know, really. And it looks like, you know, proper wood flooring. It's amazing. 
um, I, I saw it in a couple of houses, I, uh, places I was looking at recently. And then you're going, wow, that's lino. That's good lino. So just be aware. And the reason, yes, carpet is the worst for creating dust. And I have taken my carpets up, you know, as I get ready for getting my house ready to show, I've taken up my carpets. And the one thing of my rugs, you know, I had rugs under certain things. The one thing that amazes me is just how much dirt is underneath the rug. That's literally getting worn into the rug and through it. It's like, you know, you're actually filtering dust through your rugs. Whereas if it's on the floor, you see it because you sweep it up, you know, every day. Um, I know I was horrified when I, I took up my carpets and said, I, I don't want carpets again. I, you know, I don't care if I have to wear socks in the winter. Yeah, it's amazing the difference it makes. And even if you've got a puppy, what I found really interesting was, although the puppies take a little while to get used to it, and that's why I had drugs, quite honestly. Um, but... You know, the hair at least, you know, gravitates to the side of the room. So you can just literally go down the sides, the edges of the room. And, the, you know, that's where 90% of their dog hair is going to be. How many of you have noticed how much of your hair? I used to blame it all on Bean Bean, but you know something? What did I clean today? Ah, uh, I, I... I cleaned today um, with with a, a Swiffer mop type thing, which is my version of it. But I was amazed how much of my hair, because it wasn't anybody else's, how much of my hair I picked up in my bedroom. It's like, does it come out in chunks overnight or something? Yeah, for those of you just reading what Jody's put up, thank you for putting that up, Jody. Uh, if you don't have a way of contributing, and, but you think that the you know the blogs are useful to you? Um, please, if you're thinking about getting anything on Amazon, go through any of the links that are at the bottom of any of my uh, vlogs. There are a series of links. You can go in in any one of those. It won't cost you any more, and you don't have to buy anything. That's where you know wherever you land up. You don't have to buy anything there. Just go and do your normal shopping. What will happen is at the end of the year. I'll have a little credit to go towards my paints, and I will love you so much for that. Um, yes, your hair's very long. My hair's not very long, but I'm amazed how much falls out. They say at least 100 strands fall out every day, did you know? Even when you're healthy. That's quite a lot. And I have to say that I did not suffer from allergies <laughs> for the longest time, but I do not, big time. So, you know, as you can tell, um, I can really see it here. I've had 10 hours sleep or nine hours sleep and look at the bags. And this is because I've got allergies going on or because I'm old and decrepit. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I even I've got a bit of makeup on, but, you know, if, if I don't put makeup on, these are literally brown. <laughs> you know, it's just like... <laughs> Not fun to look at. So I hope that you found that helpful. And what I would like to do is to continue to find sort of areas like this that I think, you know, we all perhaps might learn something. I was amazed. I have to say, I was amazed that this was the worst of all. I wouldn't have given this credit for the worst of all. And I wouldn't have put toothbrushes up as high and, and toothbrush holders. I would not have put those up as high. I definitely didn't think that pet toys and bowls were in the top 10, to be quite honest. But it sort of makes sense when you think about it. So I'm hoping that we will all be healthier. <laughs> and I wanted to find out, is there anybody else that has a shredding task or a procrastination that they'd like to do this week and be held accountable for? Because that's what I'm doing now is I am checking every week who needs to report in. I'm glad you find it helpful. Thanks, Jody. So 
So anybody got something that they're being procrastinating over and would like to be held accountable on? Yeah, I haven't started mine yet, Linda. <laughs> but then this is the way I look at it. Fridays, I do two broadcasts. I'm pretty, I can tell you, I'm pretty exhausted after I've done two broadcasts. So Friday isn't a good day for me. So that's when we started this. Saturday is my day. <laughs> right? It's my day. <laughs> and so I actually stay in bed most of Saturday. And today is Sunday. Oh, and I do and I do the research for Sunday's program. So I give myself that weekend. I will start my shredding tomorrow. And I intend to do 10 minutes a day. Uh, and if I do that, that will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That'll be 50 minutes, nearly an hour's worth of sorting and shredding. And I committed to doing 30 minutes. So that's my plan. <laughs> and I, I was in the kitchen making my crepes this morning, and I literally took everything out of another shelf that I had already cleaned about a couple of months ago. But I can see that, you know, it, what happens is each time you clean up, you realize that could be a lot cleaner, you know, and take everything out. And, and I, I'm using putting things in the kitchen. A lot of I, I apparently have a lot of stuff for making my own tortilla type things. I use them instead of chips. Um, so I've got a lot of lentils and um, bean mixes and so forth that I that I turn into flour and and make a tortilla out of, and then I brush them with um, oil and put them in the microwave and make my own chips. And <laughs> I, I apparently got quite a lot of those, so I need to make more chips. <laughs> Does anybody else make their own tortilla chips? I'm actually getting quite good at it now. I'm quite surprised. <laughs> I got I got a pan, so I'm happy. So, if anybody else needs anything, all right. Uh, Beth wants to drink more water. How are you going to keep track of that? Hmm. Yes, my question would be, um, that program that you're using to check your calories every day, it, does it have a drink water uh, function on it? Because some of them actually do have that where you can log in how much water you've taken in. The other thing is, um, you know, sort of give yourself a quota. I don't know if you have a mug like this, but give yourself a quota to say, uh, you want to drink three of these a day, for example. And then keep track how many times you fill it up. If I concentrate now, I can finish one of these just in the next 10 minutes. Maggie's saying that water is her favorite drink. Yeah, I'm getting better when I remember. Um, for those who remember smoking, I found that instead of smoking, I started to drink water. Uh, so whenever you think you are, you know, I need to rest, maybe you need water. And if you're lucky enough to have a soda stream and can make carbonated water, that sort of is quite luxurious, isn't it? Um, and I like, I haven't got it today, but I've got an infuser thing that I can put in here. And so I can put a piece of lemon or, or a raspberry or something and just infuse the water with a nice taste. So, you know, with a, with a natural fruit, not with sugar. Well, fruit has sugar in it, but you know what I mean? It just gives it, just takes the edge off it. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you guys got some value out of that. It always makes it worthwhile. Which one was your favorite one? I'm sure you all had different one, ones, but which one did you go, wow, I needed to know that one. 
Oh, so Linda's saying she needs to declutter more. Do you want to give me a specific? Because that is the easiest thing to say is I need to de declutter more. That means, you know, <laughs> I can't say to you, All right, so give me something that you're going to start working on, Linda, that I can say to you, did you do X? Let's be specific. It's like, to me, it's I'm going to take a picture of my shredding before I start this week, and then every day I'm going to take another picture so that you guys can hopefully see it diminishing. <laughs> Linda. <laughs> Oh, it's hot here. <sighs> Kitchen cupboards, okay. Any one in particular? Give me one kitchen cupboard that you want to work on. Oh, the, <laughs> the famous plastics. Okay. Did you did you see how much I had, Linda? <laughs> I threw out a complete garbage bag full of plastic. I didn't throw it out. I recycled a complete garbage bag full of plastic. And then I still had an amazing Mount Moore. <laughs> I think I had another half that I threw out later because I opened something else up and I went, there's a lot of plastic in here. And I'm starting to put that stuff in so mason jars now. <laughs> it all fell out earlier. You see, it was screaming, please help me. That, that's Well, Linda, did you see what I did with mine? Uh, what I did with mine is I pulled everything out and I put it into um, a couple of boxes. And then I sorted through, first of all, can I find the lid to this one? That was my first thing. And then when I got the lid on it, then I said, now that you've got the lid on it, now let's put them in. You know, I actually literally now, I, I put them in sizes. Do you want to see what I kept, Linda? out of a bag and a half. Do you want to see what I kept? Hang on a sec. That's good if they're good sizes for freezer leftovers, but I literally kept uh, one whole set of these, and that's all I like. For some reason, I kept this. It's a vacuum sealed thing for keeping tea in. <laughs> Somebody gave it to me, so I kept it. So, all right, so... Beth, there's a reason why your daughter doesn't return your Tupperware. Two reasons. Number one is your name isn't on it. Yeah, get yourself an indelible pen and put your initials on it uh, and the lid. And the second thing is uh, you probably don't ask for it to be returned. Hello, I gave you my you know, red Tupperware container yesterday. Uh, can you move it into something else so I can get it back? I need it. You see, what happens is you're teaching her not to return it. Beth, <laughs> you taught her not to return your Tupperware. True? Think about it. Somebody gave me many, many years ago, and I thought this was a great idea. Somebody gave me, you know, those official 
seals that lawyers have, where it's an actual seal that they pushed down. Somebody gave me a seal and said, this book is the property of, with my name. And what they, what they said is every time you lend a book, just put the seal in it and then just keep phoning up and saying, by the way, I lent you, I lent you this book. Um, and you'll know that it's my copy because it's got a seal in the front page. The first page has my seal in it. Oh, Beth, that's a twofer. Beth, way to go. Maybe, don't use maybe, leave maybe out. I should, <laughs> I shouldn't make a lunch every day for work. I can't believe that you do. You really have trained her to be codependent or, or de, you know, or dependent actually. So you not only make them, but you pay for them and she's an adult. Okay, there's got to be more to this story. I, I must be missing something because that sounds like what you would do with a five-year-old, not what you would do with an adult. So help me understand, Beth. Why would you do that for an adult? But she is pregnant. Really? So that makes her incapable. <laughs> let, let me let me get the rest of that sentence. She is pregnant and forced to be on her back so she can't get to her kitchen or Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you understand what you're teaching her, right? That, that's what I want you to understand. When we treat adults like children, then we teach them to be childish. Yes, because you don't want her to grow up. That, that's what that message is. You don't want her to grow up. You want to keep her as your child. Sad. But I understand it, but just be aware what you're doing. You know, Beth, I love you to bits, but you understand that this is not healthy for her, right? But I understand if you want to do it, it makes you happy. Just don't ever complain about it. I know. <laughs> I know. But there's a balance, all right? Sure. I, I cook for my tenants once a week because I love them. I don't do it every day. Right? It, it, you know, it should be something that you do. Anyway, just think about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah you need to work on that. <laughs> and, you know, keep giving it some. Can you see, though, that you by treating her like a three-year-old, she will stay reacting like a three-year-old. You, you know, what's going to happen to her when mummy goes? Who's going to make food? It's going to be a horrible shock to her. And, you know, how can she live in reality if you're paying those bills? You know, so all I'm saying is give it a bit of thought. And by the way, Beth, you're not the first one, right? And you're not the last one. A year from now, when you come to these broadcasts, you'll hear somebody say something like that, and your eyes will roll and go, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Ask Jody. <laughs> Jody is an expert at those sort of things. Oh, that's good. Okay, so she does actually pay the bill for it. So you can make stuff for her. Really, Beth? I mean, and you didn't ever see that for what it was. Hmm, okay. <laughs> All right, so my suggestion is don't stop doing it because it gives you pleasure. But yeah, I understand why you take her to the grocery. Yeah, I understand that. 
She doesn't drive because she doesn't need to. You take her everywhere, from what I can gather. She doesn't need, you know, she gets to save. Does she pay you for the gas? Does she contribute in any way to the upkeep of the car? You know, because from what I hear, you are her private taxi service. Uh, you come home from work and then you take your daughter somewhere. So, I mean, big two by fours all over the place here, Beth, but just keep it, keep smiling and think about it, right? Because I know, oh, she pays you 50 a week? Really? For the groceries or for gas? That's good. I'm proud of you, Beth. And now that you're working, will you still have time? So think about that. And a friend of mine did an experiment, Beth, and she said, it actually was cheaper for her to use like Uber than it was to have a car. All right, so just think about that, right? And, and because you're gonna have less and less, enough, less and less time for Beth. And I just wanna make sure that we look after that side for you, Beth. You know, that we help you get, keep your eyes open to where your time is going. <laughs> so there are a few people in your life that may have to grow up a little bit and, and step up to the plate. I've got to go and get my food cooked. So I'm going to wish you all a very good week. Thank you. I trust we will all have cleaner houses this week to some degree. And I'll be interested to hear what you did. I think I'm going to get my steamer out and give it a bit of a go this week. <laughs> How many of you want to see that? <laughs> All right, big hugs to you all. I'm glad you enjoyed this. I must admit that it's a, I, I really sort of sit now, what can I do to entertain everybody this week? And I'm thinking, I wonder if anybody else knows about how dirty these things really are. <laughs> so I thought I'll do it for Sunday. All right, everybody, have a super week and we'll see you at the weekend. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, hope you had a good Father's Day. Well, you know, hope the men in your life had a good Father's Day if they are fathers. And in the meantime, look after one another. But as usual, please, please, please look after yourself first. This is Dear Mama Selsing. Bye-bye for now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>